This is the Irk Russell Show, featuring highlights of Georgia Southern Football 88. Brought to you by Hardee's. We're out to win you over. By Eastern Airlines. We earn our wings every day. By Franklin Chevrolet of Statesboro, home of the Franklin value. And by Coastal Bank, your personal financial expert. And now here's WJCL sports analyst Bill Edwards. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Homecoming 1988, the Samford game. Irk, we come back home, not only on a roll, but against a team that has uh, done a little something that we've done in the past, leapfrogged a little bit as far as jumping up in divisions and a team we've never faced before. What do we know about Samford? Well, Bill, they do remind me of our team uh, several years ago, like 1984. Uh, they're making a jump from Division Three, uh, where they had the highest scoring team, uh, I believe, on any level last year, scoring yeah. like 51 points a game. Uh, but let me tell you this, uh, everybody thinks that Georgia Southern should win this football game today, and possibly we should. But every game has a personality all of its own. Mm -hmm. And you can see every week teams that are supposed to win not winning. And I also want you to know that I'm scared to death <laughs> because I can see they have the scoring ability to score against us. If we're not in a proper state of mind, and boy, I hope we are, then we're in for a tough afternoon. Let's hope that... Uh, that our guys are ready to play, and I kind of believe they are, that we have another overflow crowd here. It's gonna be a beautiful afternoon for football. Just the wind, the usual wind, is, is the thing that keeps it from being a perfect day. And it can be a perfect day if we'll knock out this wind here and <laughs> enjoy homecoming afterwards. Good homecoming atmosphere? Yeah, it really is. Uh, I think homecomings at Georgia Southern are getting bigger and bigger every year, and that, uh, that pleases me no end. I, I think it's tremendous as we come over on the bus to see people uh, tailgating, uh, groups of people gathered around their cars, waving at the bus and hollering, go Eagles, and uh, shoot, we're getting to, to where we have a regular football atmosphere here on Saturday <laughs> afternoon, and I'm tickled to death. How are we doing training-wise? We don't have any injuries. The, uh, the only problem that we had last week, Raymond Gross came out of last year's, last week's game at James Madison with a turf toe. That's a sore big toe, and let me tell you, it's hard to move and hard to cut and hard to push off when your big toe hurts. But Raymond's the kind of guy and the kind of competitor that's going to uh, let his turf toe hurt him tomorrow. <laughs> okay, good luck. Knock him dead today. Thank you, Bill. All see right. you later. All right. We'll see you with the first half highlights of the Sanford game. Homecoming 88 for Georgia Southern after this. Whatever state the players were in when the game began was questionable. It was clear, however, that Sanford was aware they were in the state of Georgia and upsetting Georgia Southern would make their season. And they started off well as David Primus returned the opening kickoff 40 yards to the 43. Nor did they waste any time testing the passing lanes. Quarterback Ted Darby opened the contest with a 15-yard strike to wide receiver Tim Richardson to the Eagle 42. And a great call on third and 10 as Darby screened one right over the Eagle rush to Shorty Smith. An animated fire plug for 15 more yards. We got another nine-yard dose of Shorty on a draw play. And just like that, the Bulldogs were down to the GSC 18. And Smith's moves were more than impressive as he brought back memories of Gerald Harris putting on the brakes, reversing, dancing inside a defender for a first and goal at the Southern Five. And a nifty call on the ensuing play as Darby pitched a tailback Donnie Rory who arched a rainbow right back to Mr. Darby in the end zone. Six-nothing Sanford, a drive that was a thing of beauty, depending, of course, on whose side you were on. Yeah, it sure was. Now, I wasn't looking upon it as a thing of beauty. It was uh, horrible as far as I was concerned, but uh, they did that. They executed well. Uh, whoever was calling their plays over there did a super job of, of calling the plays at the right time. And their number three is as good a football player as Shorty Smith mm -hmm. as we played against. Their quarterback is a very courageous player because uh, our guys hit him just one second after release the ball time after time. 
And you can also thank the Eagles' Mark Giles for rushing Samford kicker Scott Engel, who missed the extra point. 6-0 was the best the Bulldogs could do. The Eagles then spent the next six minutes plus getting those points back, starting with Raymond Gross' scramble for a dozen yards up to the GSC 46. On the ninth play of the marathon drive, Carl Miller got the call, taking Raymond Gross' pitch and hitting the left corner for 16 yards down to the Bulldogs' 16. And here it is once again coming at you, figuratively and literally. Then a little help from the opposition as Gross rolled right and tried to hit Ross Warsham at the goal line, but a defender hit Ross first, and pass interference gave the Eagles a first down at the two. Still, it took more than three plays to score, including an illegal procedure penalty against Southern. As usual, it was E.T. phoning home. Ernest Thompson head over heels into the end zone. With Mike Dowis' extra point, the Eagles wouldn't trail again. Southern's next big break almost came on the ensuing kickoff when linebacker Trey Smith literally ripped the football from David Primus' hands. But Mike Vest fell on it for the Bulldogs. And check out the intensity from ground level. But it wasn't long before opportunity knocked again for the Eagles. On third and 11 from their own 30, quarterback Ted Darby rolled a pass and found Giff Smith in his face. He hurried his throw, and Taz Dixon went sky high to snare this one at midfield. And the Eagle Express was back in business. We, we figured the, the main receiver would be number one today, and uh, we had different coverages to uh, try to stop him, and that was one of the coverages, and he just had, I don't think the, I don't think the quarterback ever saw him. That helped me out a lot. And, uh, and uh, we just try to double cover him most of the day to keep him from catching the ball because you can see he was a real good receiver on the touchdown he caught. But uh, they got a real good pass. You had to go high for that one. Yeah, they, <laughs> someone told me that uh, I knocked the guy down and when I jumped. I didn't, I didn't know I did that, but uh, I'm glad I didn't throw a flag on me. But, but uh, I'm just glad I called it. <laughs> You're glad. Raymond wasted no time at all getting it cranked up, hitting Tony Belzer in the flats for 15 yards. And on first down from the Samford 14, Joe Ross was long gone, and Southern was up 14-6. Eagle fans, young and old, were delighted. Even injured cheerleaders were happy. And there was still lots more to cheer for. In the second stanza, the Eagles padded their lead as Gary Miller reeled off 20 yards down to the Samford 11. And two plays later, Ernest Thompson was right back where he belongs. In the end zone, of course. 21-6, Georgia Southern. Here it is again, and the alumni cheerleaders, none the worse for wear, were whooping it up. They're just as good as ever and looking great. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the Eagle defense was beginning to make life miserable for the Bulldogs, especially Ted Darby. That forced them to punt, giving the Eagles great field position. Raymond did the quarterback draw, got 17 yards on a third and 14 play, despite almost falling at the line of scrimmage. And Joe Ross cut off left guard and got the final 15, carrying cornerback Jerome Beeman into the promised land with him. 28-6 Eagles, but the Bulldogs still had some fight left themselves. Darby brought him right back upfield and made this sensational play despite getting clobbered by Darren Alford. His pass to Shorty Smith was phenomenal, as was the catch at the Eagle 1. On the next play, Brady Jones scored for Sanford, and Darby's two-point conversion pass to Tim Richardson in the back of the end zone cut the Eagle lead in half by the half. And we'll be back to take a look at the sights and sounds of homecoming 88 and the playoff possibilities after we pay some bills. Homecoming 1988. Boy, there's simply nothing like college. Uh, frankly, I'd have been a professional student if it had paid better. Everyone downtown and on campus decorated in eagle blue, white, and gold. And of course, the homecoming parade, containing such fascinating features as Kappa Alpha's shopping cart drill team, where precision, coordination, and teamwork are practically non-existent, but then again, who cares? And thank goodness they didn't leave out that real crowd pleaser, the hokey pokey move known to drill teams everywhere. There were also future heartbreakers. And homecoming went from the sublime to the ridiculous. Like Eric Russell with hair. 
And believe it or not, Ripley, the winner of the Irk Russell Lookalike Contest. All told, homecoming 1988 was a huge success as usual. And if this doesn't convince you nothing will, it's good to see that the future is in good hands. Our guest at halftime, back by popular demand, the sports well, information director at Georgia Southern, Mark McClellan. Mark, it may sound a little premature, but we need to start uh, getting folks some information about uh, the playoff picture and what they can do ticket-wise and all of that. Well, it's that time of year again, and uh, with two weeks left in the season, of course, not knowing at this point how the outcome of the Sanford game is going to come out. Uh, if Georgia Southern wins against Sanford and wins against South Carolina State, we're in good shape. Well, we're in the playoff. That's a lock. Uh, and, and a great chance of hosting more than one game provided we keep winning uh, and that could mean two games that could mean three games just depending on how some other things happen there's still some key games left uh, and only one conference has been locked up western illinois is the only team that has, has clinched a spot in the playoffs they've won the gateway but the rest of the conferences most of them will not be decided until the last week of the season uh, key games to watch next week uh, stephen f austin and northwestern louisiana two top ten teams the winner of that wins the southland conference against an automatic bid Idaho and Boise State are playing in Boise. The winner of that game wins the Big Sky Conference against the automatic bid. Of course, Stephen F. Austin and Idaho both ranked ahead of Georgia Southern, and uh, those are those are the games to watch and will have a great impact on what happens as far as seating in the playoffs go. Our guest at halftime, Mark McClellan, Sports Information Director at Georgia Southern. We'll be back with the second half of the Samford game after this. After exchanging punts a couple of times and aided by the most flagrant pass interference call I've ever seen, and I think I'd get no argument from Tony Belzer here, the Eagle Express got back on track with Frank Johnson beginning to show some of his old form, taking this pitch around the left corner, going 19 yards to the Bulldog 13. Then Joe Ross, speaking of showing his old form, took Raymond Gross pitch and got those final 13 yards through a hole even I could have walked through for his third touchdown of the afternoon and a 35-14 Southern advantage. It seemed like we was just like one tackle away or one thing away breaking it long. So it was like sooner or later, we was gonna break it and get some more touchdowns. Like Frankie's too long. It was just like sooner or later, we was gonna do it. Mm -hmm. How you feel? Your, your hand recovered okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm healthy. I'm surprised. I'm healthy at this game. I can <laughs> leave and not go see the doctor. And that's the best thing. <laughs> Way to go, Joe. But the Samford crowd didn't come to watch Georgia Southern play, obviously. They came to beat them and were doing their level best to accomplish that feat. Ted Darby to Donnie Rory, and then Darby to number one, Tim Richardson. And in seven plays, they'd gone the distance, and the Dogs had once again closed the gap to just 14 points as the fourth period got underway. But the Eagles can strike with lightning speed as well. And before you could say Frank Johnson, the Eagles were soaring again. Johnson took Raymond's pitch around left end, waited for his blockers, followed him, broke tackles from those who managed to somehow get through, and was long gone, 70 yards to pay dirt. And no sooner had we changed quarterbacks from Raymond Gross to Snake Burnett, doing a little bit of his swivel hips routine here, when it was that lovable instant replay, sort of deja vu too. Frank the Tank going 53 yards for the tally this time, and Southern was in complete control. Welcome back, Frank. Yeah, I was thinking this was my last homecoming. I had to try to pick myself up and go out in style. What was, uh, now you had two runs, was that basically the same play? Yeah, it was basically the same play. Both of them was uh, 13 option. Uh, what it is, uh, uh, the quarterback is designed to read the tackle. And what happened, the uh, four I came down and took the fullback, the end took the quarterback, and I was just me out there along with the A back. And, uh, they did a good job, and once they, you know, got them on the ground, I just try to, you know, pick up speed and get through the hole. But uh, you, you managed to um, do a little on your own there. I noticed you broke a couple of tackles. Yeah, I was, like I said, man, I was kind of hungry for this one. And once I got downfield, I kind of saw a lot of blue, and I was like, oh, God, you know. And uh, I kind of stopped and waited on them and picked them up downfield, and they just led me into the end zone. You notice it took about 30 minutes for me to get down there. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel good? You, you feel st still yeah, a little slow? Yeah, I feel better, man. I feel much better. It's, it's, it's still kind of bothering me when I go to the left a little bit, but today it didn't bother me at all, and for the past two weeks, I really felt great, right. and I felt like my old self. All right, let's get South Carolina State next week. Oh, they, they, they can look out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
It's great to see Frank Johnson back and Southern fans, especially the kids, having the time of their lives and enjoying Eagle football 1988. And the Southern defense as well. Gip Smith, Patrick Parr, Michael Berry, Darren Alford and all enjoying that great Baskin Robbins ice cream flavor, quarterback crunch. Yeah, we got back there, we got real close on him. Uh, he got the ball off, you know, a couple of times and, and made some big plays, you know, uh, I think two of their touchdown passes were, 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 were he was falling down and threw the ball and they scored on and Irk adds avoiding penalties as a top priority heading for South Carolina State and the playoffs. In a tight game, that will get us beat. We've had trouble along those lines. We really devote Sunday's lecture and Monday's practice to uh, correcting errors like that. Obviously, we're going to have to go into Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday <laughs> with the same plan. But those are things I think that we can improve upon. P.S. Remember linebacker Hugo Rosignol here intercepting a pass in the Eagles' first ever playoff game against Jackson State in 1985? Well, yesterday, Hugo had something else to say. Marry me, Debbie. And this story has a happy ending, too. He said yes. And Irk will be back to say a few final words after this. Homecoming 1988 was uh, probably a little bit like, uh, I guess our crowd felt somewhat like the Florida State crowd, Eric, that um, a more formidable opponent today than we thought we were going to have. Well, that shows you how much smarter I am than the crowd, Bill, because <laughs> I, you know, we talked about it earlier. Any team that comes in here to play Georgia Southern is going to play extra hard. They did. They had a good game plan on offense and defense, and until we simply wore them down, because for one time we're bigger and stronger than an opponent. Shucks, if, if they had had our experience, uh, if it had been more equal, I believe they could have won the game. But they didn't. It's greatly to our guys' credit that in spite of not playing their best game and a tremendous number of penalties that we had to overcome, that they were able to score 49 points. Bill, Sanford has a good football team. They are simply young. Uh, we won today's game uh, on experience of our players, I think, more than anything else. But on the good side, we had the biggest crowd we've ever had. Did you know that? Yep. I wasn't aware of that until just a while ago. We set a rushing record today. I don't know what it, what it 500 is. 500 and something yards. 500 yards. Boy, I think that's terrific. And in order to do that, we had to overcome 100 penalties, I know. I never <laughs> have seen so many yellow flags out there. And we finished season number 10. We've got number 11 coming on and we're going to play at home, and isn't it great that we don't have to get on the bus and, <laughs> and travel more than 10 minutes? Um, formidable opponent again. Record-wise, not particularly impressive. Size-wise, they are impressive. Uh, they're the kind of team that may take the ball and run it straight at us, and I kind of worry about uh, people that do that to us. Okay. But we've got a chance to play just one more time, and that's all we've ever asked, and we have season number 11 coming up, and it seems like we just started playing yesterday. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, let's get after them. All right. Okay. See you Thanks, later. Sir. Okay. We'll see you later, too. Thanks very much for joining us. That's it for the uh, Samford game today. We'll see you with the South Carolina State highlights next week. For everybody associated with the Eric Russell Show, I'm Bill Edwards from Paulson Stadium. Good night. This has been the Eric Russell Show, featuring highlights of Georgia Southern football 88. This sports special has been brought to you by Hardee's. We're out to win you over. By Eastern Airlines, we earn our wings every day. By Franklin Chevrolet of Statesboro, home of the Franklin value. And by Coastal Bank, your personal financial expert. This sports special has been produced by WJCL-TV in conjunction with the Hardee's Georgia Southern Sports Network.